Hey, what's up everyone? I hope everyone's having a good week so far. Uh, it's been quite the interesting week. I uh, wanted to, uh, you know, with you know, with tomorrow being Thursday night football and all, I wanted to kind of get something out to uh, discuss the, the Bengals uh, game tomorrow night against the uh, Houston Texans live from Paul Brown Stadium. Unfortunately, I will not be there tomorrow night. I have uh, other obligations. I'll be, you know, Travis has a uh, soccer game tomorrow night, so I will uh, obviously, you know, choose to watch my offspring play some soccer. Uh, but overall, based off of last uh, of, off of Sunday's game, this one's going to be an interesting, interesting one to watch, uh, simply because of the offense and the way everything kind of played out for the Cincinnati Bengals against. Uh, against this very, I, I, what I was going to say is a solid Houston Texans defense, uh, led by JJ Watt. They got Whitney Merciless, and obviously Jadavion Clowney. It's going to be a, it's going to be quite the the task for the Bengals offensive line, who struggled severely against, you know, a Ravens team that I think is is down a little bit. I, I don't think that they are. I don't think they're as good as as many people think. I believe I had them either eight and eight or seven and nine. I can't remember off the top of my head with the preview, but uh, they made they really took advantage of Cedric Obwehi and and his weaknesses. And I was kind of surprised. And I heard uh, something from Tony Pike on a couple shows this week talking about the Bengals and the way they handled Obwehi during the during the preseason by not letting him play into the third and fourth quarters of some of these preseason games. Very interesting to kind of talk about. It was, uh, I was a fan of the way he, of what he was talking about with, you know, you give, you give him a chance to, uh, to build some confidence by, like he was saying, by letting him pancake some of these guys, you know, yeah, granted it would be, you know, third and fourth string players, but, you know, you let him pancake some of those guys, build that confidence, then maybe it won't struggle as bad, you know, during the regular season. You know, obviously, you know that you never know. It could be, it could be ugly, and uh, that's kind of the way it was. That's the way it played out. Uh, Terrell Suggs looked like the Terrell Suggs of years past, not the 35, 36 year old Terrell Suggs that we would have expected. Uh, you know, got to give, got to give credit to the uh, to the Ravens and the way they handled that and the way they really took advantage of, of the Bengals' weaknesses and really dictated what you know what to expect. Uh, from the Bengals offense and Marvin he said he did say something kind of surprising the fact that and it's, it's not the first time he said it and that's what kind of makes me question him as a coach is you know the he basically stated that the Ravens defense dictated how the Bengals were going to operate offensively uh, that's not how that works you have to dictate you know what the defense does and they just you know they they let they let everything else play out the way they should. The way I don't think they should have. Uh, they basically took Tyler Eifert out of the game completely, which was, you know, a, a damn shame to me. If you ask, you know, if you ask my opinion on that, he's got to get more. He's got to get more reps. He's got to be more of a weapon. You cannot allow the Ravens' defense to, to take him out. AJ Green with only a handful of touches or a handful of, you know, looks. You you can't have that either. It's. And I'm not saying you got to force the ball to these guys, but get the ball in their hands somehow. Whether it's, you know, some end arounds or quick screens, stuff like that. That's how you got to get the ball in some of their hands, so they can make plays. Let your playmakers make plays, and they just they just weren't doing that. And that's you know that's on the coaching staff. And that was one of the things I I did bring up in my in my post game video that I did here on Periscope that they just you know. The play calling I didn't think was, you know, wasn't suffice. So it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out tomorrow night. It's going to be a very tough matchup for the Bengals offensively against this Texans defense. Like I said, you know what you're going to get from the Houston Texans defense. They're going to pin their ears back and they're going to come right after him and try and take advantage of Cedric Obwehi. Uh, just think about if it, he struggled mightily on Sunday, imagine how much he's going to struggle against three pass rushers who are incredible. Whitney Merciless, you've got, like I said, J.J. Watt, and you've got uh, Jadavion Clowney. I mean, they're going to do what they can to isolate that 
you got to get a you got to get a tight end in on that side to help him out. Uh, otherwise, he's just going to get eaten alive, and it's going to be an ugly, ugly game. And you know, Dalton, uh, you know, not all the blame was on Dalton on Sunday. You know, he wasn't good. I'm not going to you know make any bones about that. I'm a Dalton guy. I think that he is, you know, I think he's our quarterback. He needs to be our quarterback. Uh, stats, you know, I, I'm going to say stats prove it. And, you know, Richard Skinner was right on on Channel 12 the other night. Just look at the stats. That's all we're going to say. Uh, I know some of the Dalton haters out there are, you know, you're not going to change their mind. They're they're hard-headed when it comes to that, and they're, they're not going to change. They want A.J. McCarron, and that's it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It is what it is. But, again, you got to look at the stats. And, again, it's going to show you that Andy Dalton, I think, is going to be our guy, and I think he should be our guy. Uh, but that's not going to, you know, take blame away from how bad he was on Sunday because when he did have time, he didn't make good throws, didn't make good decisions. That's where I think you could have taken the chance and taken uh, – you could have taken Dalton out and, and brought in A.J. McCarron just to kind of give him – Yes, Kyle. You're correct. I'm a, you know I'm a Colorado guy through and through as well. But way to, way, to, way to call me out on that one. Even though people can see, yeah, my Denver Broncos jacket right here. Yeah, that's right. I love my Broncos too. But um, back to the Dalton thing, I, I think that if they, they you know, sometimes you, you know your quarterback doesn't have it, you just got to make that change and just say, hey, you know, Andy, it's not your day today. Let's just let AJ go after it and see what he can do. And, and go from there. But, uh, you know, again, hindsight 2020, I don't, you know, you never know what's going to go on with that kind of uh, kind of situation. But uh, it's going to be, it could be a long, long night tomorrow night for the Bengals offensively. Defensively, I think they're going to be just fine. I, I don't see Houston Texans getting much on the Bengals, you know, when it comes to defense. Oh, Todd Hall, there we go. Todd's replying via Twitter on my about my uh, about my video here, but again, tomorrow night is going to be interesting defensively. I think if the Bengals can, if they can get you know continuous pressure, I, I think tomorrow is going to be an ugly. I think it's going to be an ugly game overall. I can see it being like a 10-7, 13-10 type game. I don't think either offense is going to be able is going to be able to get much done. On the other defense, it's. It, I mean, both offenses are, are going to struggle. Bengals have obviously a lot more weapons offensively than what Houston does. It's just going to come down to the Bengals utilizing those weapons and, and getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers uh, to make things happen that way. And that's gonna. That's where it's going to come down to uh, the play calling. You know, the they've got to. They've got to make it. They got to make it to where. You give those guys the you know the ball and let them make the plays. So it's going to be it, it's it's a crucial game I think for both teams early on in the season. Uh, with the Bengals having to travel to Green Bay after that. I mean it, that's man that's not fun. Not fun at all. Uh, then we got to go to Cleveland. So you know Cleveland's no pushover. I think Cleveland's going to be a lot better than what people think. Uh, Hugh Jackson's got a really good thing going up there. He's got the talent around the guys. They gave Pittsburgh a hell of a game. It's just going to be a matter of time, you know, before they they're serious players in this division. This is a division that is not as good as it has been in years past. You know, with that being the case, you know, who's going to step up? It's obviously I think it's going to be Pittsburgh's to lose, but it wouldn't surprise me if Cleveland finishes second in this division. It wouldn't surprise me if the Bengals or Ravens finish second division. I just think that the Bengals have the most talent out of the out of the other three teams outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, and then offensively, I think you know they're they're just as loaded as as any other team in the NFL. It's just going to come down to the weapons if they can if they can be utilized properly with an offensive line that is that's not very good. And you know that's where it's going to really. That's where it's really going to come into play. If you're if you're able to uh, to get those guys, you know, some help uh, to you know in protecting Andy Dalton, you've got something going. If you don't, it, it's not going to go very well for you. And you know, it, it's it's not. This is not a shock to anyone. 
on how on how the offensive line was going to be. We knew it wasn't going to be very good. I just didn't think it was going to be that bad. Uh, but then again, like I said, defensively, it wasn't it wasn't a bad performance by the Bengals defense on Sunday. I thought they played you know fairly well. You know, Joe Flacco, he you know he made a, you know a couple plays, I guess, but. You know, overall, wasn't wasn't that you know big of a uh, you know big of a difference you know between the two teams? I didn't think. I thought that the Bengals were a. I thought they were in a pretty good shape. Unfortunately, like I said, it just didn't work out. So you know, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be one where I could uh, I could be ranting and raving tomorrow night after it. I could be. You know, I could be ecstatic, uh, but you know things have not gone well for the Bengals when we've played Houston in prime time, as we all know. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, buck the trend there on this one and, and take it to them and, and get a victory here before we head on the road for two uh, crucial games uh, again at Green Bay, which is not going to be a fun one, and then obviously playing Cleveland on the road is, you know, it's not what it used to be. So, gotta take advantage of these games when we have a chance. So, here's a chance to really get it going. Two games in and be one and one, in a you know sitting in a, in a in an okay spot in the division. So, uh, with that being the case, you know it, it, they just got to get it done. Um, I am working on the uh, the game preview for uh, tomorrow night's the the breakdown uh, for the matchup tomorrow night at Paul Brown Stadium. It's at eight twenty five on the NFL Network. So make sure you check out feeltheimpactsports.com. That's where everything's going to be. Follow me on Twitter at I am Chris Hasbrock. Uh, you can also, I think, on Facebook is my uh, Chris Hasbrock blogger page. That's where I, you know, I send some of these videos. Also, check out uh, my YouTube page as well. I got some stuff up on there. Um, but overall, um, I'm gonna, you know, hopefully in the next, you know, next week or so, I want to do a uh, you know, little question and answer uh, session, you know, sports Q and A uh, with myself, and see if I can get any other people on there as well. See what I can do. So. Um, but as always, you guys have yourselves a fantastic night. Enjoy the game tomorrow night. Good luck in fantasy football. Uh, for those of you that are playing, if you're doing DraftKings, good luck as well. Again, follow me on Twitter. And you guys have yourselves a great night. Enjoy. And as always, stay safe. Take care.